thank you for staying with us. Well, uh, you're watching the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're still looking at the state of the nation, Nigeria at 64. Now, today marks the 64th Independence Day anniversary of Nigeria. And as we gather to celebrate this auspicious day, it is important that we not only reflect on how far we've come as a nation, but also weigh in on the future that lies ahead. In light of this, we will be taking, well, a critical look at the state of the nation. We are joined by esteemed guests who will share their insights, expounding on the current challenges and opportunities we face. Their perspectives will help us better understand the direction we are heading as a people and how we can collectively work towards a prosperous and united Nigeria. Now, the first guest we have is Anik Agule, a public affairs analyst and an energy expert. We also have Dr. Martin Morgan as a public affairs analyst. And we finally have Dr. Deji, who is also on Zoom. Um, Deji Amashala, he's a political scientist. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Happy uh, same to you. And also here in the studio we have uh, uh, Sir Kayo Deo Titoju. Uh, he is a former Equity State Commissioner for Information, uh, former um, Executive Commissioner Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, and a former Chairman Lekki Peninsula Phase One Residents Association LERA. Uh, then he is. He continues to be a an analyst, a public affairs analyst, and we're so glad to have you join us on the show this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. A lot of people watching us will say you have been on the corridors of power. You have eaten the cake <laughs> from the sauce and all of that. And so, but we'll enjoy your insights into what Nigeria has become today. So let's just begin with you in summary before we take um, them specifically. Nigeria is 64, maybe almost as old as you or older than you. I don't know what it is, but how would you assess Nigeria at 64? Yeah, really. I think um, I'm older than Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. By almost uh, five years. Oh, oh yeah. fantastic. But um, in 1960, I haven't really started this primary school, mm -hmm. you know, because my hand was yet to reach my <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, as soon as uh, I started, after the age of seven, uh, we started celebrating uh, independence by going to the field on the March Pass. And uh, I think we were, it used to be refer, uh, referred to as Empire Day, you know. So schools, we assemble at uh, Central place for March Pass, and uh, in my locality there, uh, uh, we will all go to, a, a, you know, a middle field in the community, you know, where we will do the March Pass, and uh, you know, everybody happy with the uh, uh, green, white, green uh, uh, Asia. We call it Asia then, you know, and. Uh, but now, um, well, Nigeria has grown, both in size and in content. And uh, it's not really easy, and it won't be fair to compare Nigeria 1960 with Nigeria 2024. Then, Agric was the mainstay, but now it's oil and gas, okay? Then, people are more contented with hard work. Now, people want to, you know, uh, 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 make rich quick. And, uh, and uh, they know that has gone through decadence, you know, over the years because of the uh, erosion of family values. Uh, uh, parents are no more having the hold that they used to have in those days. Now it's nanny and the uh, house help, the help in the socialization of, of uh, of the of the children, and they uh, with uh, you know diverse and uh, 
you know, uncoordinated values. Uh, so, uh, until we now start this discussion, maybe by develop, de developmental impulses and uh, or through specific, uh, you know, maybe uh, let's use ministry, then it's then that we can discuss into detail. But generally, um, I can say that Nigeria has grown, but it hasn't developed. Mm. Yeah, it has grown. Uh, in terms of universities, for instance, at the time of uh, independence, there was only one university. That was University of Ibadan, 1958. Okay? Now, by 1960, others joined, like Onsuka, and uh, you, you, you get my point. Today, we have uh, many state universities, private universities. So, we have grown. But in terms of education, real education, I don't think we have developed. We are only moving with times, mm. you know, like uh, information technology, we tend to imbibe music and media, we tend to follow, follow, you know, and uh, to the extent that even music today, you can't really see the music that is well composed. Mm. It's now, you know, uh, uh, oh the no. I remember that there, there, are, there were days that you could tell a, a, a story, a full story, just mm -hmm. using music from mm -hmm. different things. Yeah. It was, and it then, was art. And then art you could talk to a girl, you know, using yeah. music. <laughs> but now, this, that's not even a main thing. You've given us uh, like the best of both worlds. Let's mm -hmm. just take that. I know that you're itching to yes, reach uh, yes, the other guests. Yes. I want to engage the other guests um, that we have via Zoom. And I think I would like to start with DJ Mashala because you are a political scientist. And I think one thing that um, our guest here had said was the fact that we have grown, but we haven't really developed. Um, right now, we're growing in size. We have over 200 million people in Nigeria. But I'm not sure the content is what we would have wanted by now, especially if we're celebrating 64 years. We would have expected that Nigeria should have been a flourishing nation because we have the potential. But what do you think, Nigeria at 64, do you think we are where we're supposed to be right now? I 
how many universities we have, and we look it back how many people have access to those universities. What is the quality of the resource person in those universities? What is the quality of infrastructure? For instance, in other class, when we are okay, for instance, in um, Singapore, Malaysia, and other countries that we have some similar, we have some um, similar climate. In a way, for the best that you tell yourself, you will see that um, there, there's an opportunity for you to go and develop. People if you are from the poorest of the poorest family, if you are destined to become a medical doctor, there is a pathway for you to become that medical doctor and that education system is very effective. But in Nigeria, where two fees is now going as high as over 400,000 naira, then you ask yourself, what is the accessibility of such a school to um, a woman selling pure water and not three key? That means that the woman will need over 1.2 million. And you need to just imagine that those children, they will feed, they will ask themselves a lot of other expenses. So at 64, I, do, um, I think that um, we shouldn't be saying that we have um, grown but not developed. The truth is that. I think that is a consolatory statement. In the true sense of it, we have neither grow in the true sense of growth. You know, um, I, I've given you my my um, definition of growth, whereby you can see the real life impact, the real life effect. If you go to um, our hospital, some of the lists there were installed as far back as you know, tens of years ago. So, can we really call that growth if we don't have? Um, um, an electrical rail system at 64. And I believe that uh, some of the panels have traveled to, to countries that they, 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 they are hold as Nigeria. So what we have here is what we have there. And if we look at it, if um, this color, Maslow, if it's what is very easy to go by in terms of hierarchy of need, at 64, I think we should be talking about technological advancement. How we want to advance technologically, not we are talking about um, food, we are talking about hunger, which is the lowest of the hierarchy of me. Okay, that okay, at 64, you can be talking okay. about hunger. No. All right, all right, so Dr. Deji. By my assessment, I believe that um, we have neither grow nor develop, but if we get our act right, Nigeria has great potential to make things happen and to um, take Nigeria yeah. from or Nigeria. Or when it be, when it to be. Yeah, Dr. Deji, thank you. Um, I think both of you are saying the same thing. Um, first of all, um, the guest in the studio is not on the hot seat. is is also a Nigerian trying to express uh, what he feels about this. <clears throat> but like the saying goes, not every activity is productive. You you can do activity without productivity. The saying also goes that not all movement is forward or backward. You could be moving, but you're not moving forward or backward. You, you're static in one place. You can grow as an individual, very tall, but you don't... You, Tall, being tall is not the same as maturity. So I think that's what he was referring to, that yes, we have a lot of things that we could say we have had, but these things are not making meaning to us as a country. And unless we begin to put those things into use, it may not make meaning for us. We may not develop the way we are supposed to develop. Uh, so as we're moving forward, before we join the other guests, we're, uh, we're hoping to be joined by someone who is on ground at the protest uh, arena. So please, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Nika Gule and uh, Dr. Morgan, please uh, just give us a moment to join our reporter from the field. I think he's ready right now. Let's see if he's ready. If he's not ready, then we'll come back to the studio. So let's, I think we should just listen to um, yeah. Nika Gule and Dr. Martin as well. Yeah, he's, um, still, he's still putting some things in, yeah. in, in order. So let's go back to Nika and Dr. Morgan. This is 64 years. Your let's look at, let us talk about assessment. Let's talk about the president's speech because that's the like the major thing. Some of the takeaways that he said was that uh, we have a roadmap and we are going somewhere. But let's start with the youth confab that he said. Thirty days uh, for a youth confab that will discuss the issues that are concerning the youth and possibly Nigeria because tomorrow they will be the ones at the helm of affairs. What do you think about that, uh, Mr. Agule? Let me begin with you. Uh, good morning to my co panelists in the room. Uh, good morning to Yang Wu and uh, Good morning. 
Good morning, sir. Good morning to our viewers. Yeah. Yes, um, I'm so good morning to you from Nigeria's Federal Capital, Abuja. Fantastic. See, the sun is, is, is out and it's, it's nice. Yes, so uh, speaking about Nigeria at 64, and specifically the root confab, which you want me to speak about, is to say that the future of Nigeria is in our roots. And it shouldn't just be about confabs, because we can have as many confabs as possible, but the youth are actually learning from those who were not even uh, those who were born before Nigeria became independent, and those who were born in the 60s and 80s, and perhaps the, let me say 80s, because those are the people that our youth are learning from. And what are our youth learning? <laughs> our youth are learning from us that you don't necessarily need to work hard to make it. You know, you possibly just need to become a politician and get a job in government, and your story will change overnight. They are seeing coppers who are given government appointments, and overnight they begin to develop their personal economies, building houses here and there, buying cars, sending their families abroad, and all of that. And that, and that, and that is the classroom where the youth are learning. They are not going to learn anything in any comfort that we are going to organize or anything like that. So for us to develop a youth for the future, a youth that will take Nigeria forward into the 22nd century, is for us who were here enjoying a better Nigeria that have now scattered this Nigeria and made Nigeria to become a laughing stock in the International uh, Community of Nations. How do you know Nigeria is a laughing stock? Just take the Nigerian green passport to anywhere and look at the reception that you are going to receive. And then there are nations that are younger than us, like the UAE is younger than us. UAE got their independence, I think, in 1972, which is a clear 20 years after we got ours. But the UAE, UAE passport can admit you to many nations that Nigerians will have to suffer to get a visa. You know, so that's the world telling us the story that we need to do better. And where we have got this country to, all of us should hang our heads in shame that we are taking this beautiful country down this road of ignominy. Where we have come to a point now that the youth believe that they have to do Yahoo Yahoo, they have to join politics, they have to uh, sing the songs of those who are oppressing them so that they will be able to survive. And then you can see the extent of corruption that has been embedded in this country. Uh, I don't think there are up to 10, 20 percent of people you can do a financial transaction with them in this country that there is no going below story. Yeah, whether they are your family members, they are in a religious or uh, business or anywhere. You know, people just believe that uh, I have to cheat the next person to be able to make it. And this, this is a classroom that is being taught by politicians who are in office. This is what they are telling the youth. This is what they are saying that you, you need to do to survive in a country. And I don't think there's any country that survives mm. with that level of um, corruption that we have in Nigeria. All right, so I want to hear from um, Dr. Martin as well, especially with what our economy is um, like at the moment. We're not doing so well. We're not thriving the way we would expect it to be. And if we look at our counterparts, if you look at Niger, for instance, who's just a neighboring country, Niger is the third fastest growing economy in the world, the fastest in Africa. We also have Libya, Rwanda, who even had a genocide, but they've been able to um, build their nation. How do you think our economy has fared so far? What are we supposed to be looking that, especially if the president is saying he believes in sustainable solutions. Hello, Dr. Martin. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Yes, Please go ahead. Yes, I was muted. Yes, uh, I think uh, we, from the opening salvos, like uh, what uh, other guests have said, into the causeway. Well, if 
for me, I had a different perspective as Nigeria, uh, celebrating Nigeria in 64, just like uh, the other uh, uh, guests there said. If a man in 64 and he's still calling, cannot speak, it's very sad. But for me, I think, uh, you know, I was disappointed. But let me just tell you, uh, uh, preambling, what I think about in 64. It's the population of 232 million. We have a country with the hope when the independence was announced in 1960. But in the race, I think uh, this group has come to sort of despondency in the sense that a lot of things have been released from the different regime. And uh, I can categorically tell you that for research, I've been that 186 million as of today, the first quarter of 2024 by US data are very unhappy in Nigeria because of the economic situation we're trying to talk about, because of bad road cost of living and inability. The, the, the possibility of having a lot of hardship. And in this one, I will get 16 million Nigerians being depressed. Before. Despite that, we still have a other expectation because we have to talk to the leadership and to the politics that really happen. How did we come to this point whereby we, are, we have an expectation that we, Nigeria is supposed to have been a superpower. We are not being able to get it. So these are some of these worries that we have to look at. 18.3 million children out of school at 64. It's giving you those things are not that threat is after the man made factors. This is what we are, we, are, we, are, we are having. And it's very sad when you say that we have children, 11 million children are going to UNICEF and malnourished in Nigeria. And this tell you, these are the data that stare us in the face. And we are not very, very happy. And this tell you that uh, we are not even, don't even know how. 179 million Nigeria cannot get a full portable water. And this is where we are talking about Nigeria at 64. This is sad. Even electricity, 85 million Nigeria don't have access to electricity. This is what is coming up from the data we gather, talking from CAPP. It's telling us about those things because it's the But let's stay the way the things are at Nigeria are facing related diseases, hurting us. So at 64, don't want these challenges we are having, they are no natural disaster. 30 percent of our uh, 30 to 50 percent of our infrastructure have a high level of deficit. We cannot say that they are natural disaster because of the no road network. There is no schools. We are, uh, uh, there is no people going to farm. And we are facing starvation in this country, and it's not helping us. And this is the challenges I'm facing. That uh, if we have a renewal hope, how do we have this renewal hope achieved? It's very very sad in the sense that we are not being able to to uh, to, uh, to achieve it. We have hunger coming. 25.3 million Nigerians are going to face a lot of hunger, and it's going to be a problem. And already, we are already facing the industrial sector. People, people are not going to farm. A lot of people are displaced. 3.3 million people, according to High Commission for Refugees, are displaced because of internal violence, Boko Haram, even community crisis. Even in my own community in Bangun, people are displaced because they could not buy themselves. So, in this century, we used to have what we call the gift free that get to the farm. How many companies have gone? Manufacturing Association of Nigeria have told us that 746 like, Manufacturing has shut down. They are even gone. Not, well, not less than uh, 14 uh, uh, multinational companies are left this show, according to NECA. So if you have this type of people before you are 64, it tells you that we see them alone, we need to interrogate the strategy of the leadership. So this is how we, I look at my situation at 64, and it's not a very palatable one. And maybe we have to now look at after your life expectancy, according to CIA 5, male 60, uh, 60 years, female 62 years. So if it was a male at that time, like brother, brother has said, the man will have gone. Then we are still ex existing here with an expectation that, yes, tissue, the problems we have are not man made. They are not a natural disaster, they are all man made. And this has to do with the leadership. And the political system give oxygen. To the economy of any country. And when they, they, they like, they, you mentioned Singapore and the rest. If the political system and the policies are not right, your economic situation will not be able to get to that when we expect it. 
So for me, I just take a crazy summary of what is a I agree and myself, the beautiful ones are not yet born. But that is a political statement to tell you that the disappointment we had from independence up to this moment is not helping us. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have a correspondent on the streets right now in Ikeja. Um, uh, there's a protest at the moment, and we just want to get a situation report from him. We're joined by Alfred Oga. Alfred, can you hear me? Good morning. Okay, I think we're going to circle back to that. All right, Alfred, um, we hope that we'll get you. But uh, let's come back to you, sir. Um, um, you talked about the fact that so many things have gone wrong from what they used to be. Morals have gone down. Everybody wants to get rich quick now. The process is not being followed and all that. Is that a product of the society itself? Or where did the fault come from? Because if that is what is happening now, that means it's a fundamental thing. These are people who will grow into becoming leaders tomorrow. And if it is a grab and run thing that they have as their mentality of becoming important in the future, then the vicious circle continues. So where do we start from? Where did that fault come from? I think really, if we have to trace it properly, it has to be traced to the military incursion into Nigeria uh, politics. politics. Mm. You, you know, uh, military a uh, way of governance is uh, quite different from democracy. Their own is order. Order is order. And it's vertical. Okay? From top down. Whereas democracy you discuss at low level and you, you it's like uh, sending a briefing, you know, in an office to the, to the top. So, never the same. And uh, they came, young, young people, between the age of 23 and uh, 30, you know, they took power, no, you, no really uh, proper indoctrination, you know, as to how to govern uh, only, you know, by, by the gun, the, by the power of, and, uh, and so when eventually they left the stage, okay, people actually came up to show interest in politics were just people who just did it as try and error. They didn't really uh, believe in it. They didn't know whether it would work. And those guys too was young people then, you know, uh, between the age of uh, 30 and uh, 45. Those were the first people that came in you know, after the military, and uh, when uh, uh, Abdul Salam, you know, now proclaim uh, a sort of uh, democracy, okay? And uh, they grab it, and um, so everyone wants to now become politician after, you know, because uh, of the way those ones uh, are mass wealth and, uh, and they use their financial power to intimidate, uh, to intimidate, uh, intimidate people. And, uh, and for instance, even lawmaking, huh? people now see it as a veritable channel for, uh, for, for getting rich quickly, OK? Either at state level or at federal level. Mm. Once you are a member House of uh, Assembly in any state, you know, they know that you know, your take-home pay is uh, more yeah, than that yeah. of uh, a professor in the university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and at federal, I mean, now once you are a member house of uh, uh, REP. So it's almost like that's the, the ambition of people right uh, now to uh, become exactly. a politician. To the extent that nobody wants to do tangible things, even farming now, mm -hmm. only the old people are really moving into farming, not not the young, young ones. ones. I agree and, with you. And uh, how much technology can you imbibe at mm. uh, age of say fifty or fifty five, going mm. back to farm? Okay, you we'll know, circle so, back to that. I yeah. think now we're joined with um, our reporter. So we have Alfred Oga. Alfred, can you hear us? 
Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Fantastic. Okay, so you are currently at the protest ground in Ikeja and would like to get a situation report from you. So what's going on? Are people coming out in the streets? What are their demands? What's happening in Ikeja right now? Uh, 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 they are here. So, uh, uh, apparently, we are supposed to uh, be maybe at home or somewhere celebrating uh, the independence as we speak. But now, right. the Nigerians uh, have, have refused to die because they feel that uh, uh, they are saying that the, the government is not doing well. The bad government that we're having is, is, I mean, is, is getting high uh, on a daily basis. And what are we then celebrating? So, they are out here uh, to speak with our leaders. I will tell them that uh, uh, they are demands of. of um, uh, one of the demands, I, I, I'm speaking with some other persons here, uh, we're looking at, um, we're talking about an end, an end to um, a, a hardship uh, in the country. Uh, some persons are talking about uh, uh, the rebattle of the poor subsidy, and uh, we're looking at the electricity uh, tariff uh, hike, it's, it's, it's getting so much more, and people are asking questions, is the Ikeja Electric, among others, working hand to hand with the government, how come they just brought all of these things up and uh, the, the, the country is just looking like a, like a seat, uh, uh, I mean, messed up. And Nigerians are here uh, saying in numbers that uh, they don't mind. They will stay here uh, till uh, uh, even the night we go to meet them here if uh, they, they don't want to give them answers to some of these questions they are asking. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what, what about the government's presence? Is there anybody who is addressing the protesters uh, right uh, now? Of course, of course. Uh, earlier before now, was, uh, uh, the CP had um, uh, invited some of us. Uh, we went to see uh, him at his office, and of course, uh, he guaranteed that um, uh, he's going to give us safety. And of course, um, now, uh, as we speak right now, we have lots of policemen here. The CP is even here himself, uh, uh, currently, as we speak, uh, granting interviews. And of course, uh, I'm telling us that um, um, they are going to stand with us until uh, we finish this. That we should be careful of uh, this plan about to come to our judges. For so far, so well, uh, from 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, Nigerians have are, are been here in numbers uh, demanding that they want change in governance. Mm. Change and the city is obviously currently here with us. But yeah. aside the city, I've not seen any other uh, government officials here. But so far, has it been peaceful? Because I know one of the things that we've always said is um, for protesters to ensure that the protest is peaceful and it's not being hijacked, um, nobody's you know, being violent or anything. But it, looking at it right now, does it look peaceful so far? Very peaceful, 100% peaceful as we speak. Nigerians are peaceful people. We are not, we are not, we are not violent people. Right. It is our government that is, that is, that is, that is failing in their own business. Everywhere you go in the world, you see Nigerians are peaceful people. The problem we have is our government. And that's why we are out here to demand that we want change in all of these things that we are talking about. Mm, fantastic. So you can see now, it's very, it's very peaceful. The policemen are here. But then we've got a new, uh, 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 some bad things are saying that uh, uh, the police are saying that uh, very soon they might want to start uh, making up an arrest. And we address it immediately uh, because we say that link cannot just come out. If uh, the member of the police, uh, Nigeria police, have not cleared that out, uh, of course, we, we were able to uh, address that immediately. We pick up your mic and we spoken with them and the CP and say, please, it, they, they should not be just try that at all because Nigerians are here, they are peaceful, they are out here with different placards and, of course, giving us our demands. Uh, the varieties of demands that we want the government to attend to as a matter of urgency. Thank you so much, Alfred. Thank you for you know just giving us the update from there. We'll circle back to it. This is a developing story, and so we'll come back to find out more on the protest. Anyways, um, thank you so much. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you for having. Me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, All right. Is, uh, so um, one of the things he said was um, people were making demands, and one of the demands, mm -hmm. obviously, is the reversal of fuel subsidy. And I think that has just um, spiraled everything that we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. um, a fuel subsidy 
was gone May 29, 2023. And as of today, there's been an increase on almost every item. And of course, people are not happy. They are going into the street to protest. And I want to speak to and, Nick. And the secrecy of Dangote, NNPCL, there's, and there's all just that. A whole lot. Nick coming to this. Yes, yeah. yes. And so I want to speak to Nick. Nick is an energy expert. So he has an idea into the whole petroleum industry. Nick, what they are saying is they want a reversal of the um, fuel subsidy. But what is your take, especially with people moving into the streets with placards on a day where they're supposed to be celebrating the independence of their country but they're out there asking for several demands one of which is the reversal of the fuel subsidy do you think that would happen anytime soon do you think it is even something that should happen in the first place and how do you think that our nation can get better from where we are thank you very much uh, for that question yeah i think the conversation should not now be on reversal of fuel subsidy or not. And because let's not forget that this fuel subsidy is used as a conduit for one of the biggest corruption in Nigeria. Mm. The conversation now should be why is it that Nigerians are unable to know how much than downgrade refinery, which has now come into operation, is selling their fuel for? Why would the NNPC, a big enough that has killed our four refineries and that have been importing petroleum products at high cost and forcing it down the throat of Nigerians, now come and stand between us and a new refinery that has started operations in Nigeria? Why? That, that should be the conversation. You know, because let's not forget that the NNPC is profiting from their inefficiencies, inadequacies. How would you kill our refineries? And then you go as far as Singapore, Rotterdam, or Houston to go and import petroleum products. Remember that for every liter of petrol that NNPC imports, Nigerians who are on a minimum wage of 18,000 or 30,000, since I'm not sure the 70,000 has been implemented by anybody yet are paying salaries of workers who are earning in dollars in those refineries abroad because in that in that liter of petrol is the cost of the labor in those refineries and the minimum wage in the likes of singapore is at like three thousand dollars the same in the us in the uk is, is like about four thousand pounds for refinery worker minimum now the man who is any 18,000, 30,000 in Nigeria is now having to pay the wages of someone any $3,000 elsewhere. This is exactly what the NPC is doing to us. And when Dangote comes onto the scene, Dangote has produced his petrol. Let us now know how much Dangote's petrol is for. You know, because the template that the NPC put forward. Where they say, oh, uh, it's going to cost a minimum of uh, 950 in the Lagos area, and then it's going to be a thousand plus up north. Was disputed by Dangote Refinery. But you can we can just realize that Dangote Refinery is being muzzled. They, 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 don't, they don't want him to say to us what this petrol is costing. So the NPC has continued the grand scheme of corruption, even with the Dangote uh, petrol as we're talking about okay and then it, it's not just about fuel subsidy you will discover all right that just it summarize it uh, 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 please nick just summarize yeah, it so so what i mean is that it's not it, the physician should not just be on fuel subsidy because for me the removal of fuel subsidy or not is not a reform as, it, as the government says it should be a complete unbundling of the downstream sector you know and electricity comes into play because don't forget that a large quantum of petroleum products are put into generators for electricity, which is not the case. So if we resolve electricity, even the pressure on petroleum products will be taken off. Okay. So oh. there needs to be a more holistic approach. All right, okay. Thing. So, uh, gentlemen, you have to be very, very brief because we'd like to take your <clears throat> last comments uh, as we wrap up. Uh, 
uh, the president has spoken uh, so many things. It's a developing uh, conversation. It will not end today. We'll be x-raying all these things in the coming days. So I'd like to just know what you think is the way forward in as brief as possible a moment, uh, starting with you, uh, Dr. Deji. What is our way forward? We are 64 today. We cannot keep giving excuses. But what do you think? If you had the ear of the president, you will be telling him in less than one minute, please. Well, um Briefly, if I have the words of the president, I will be telling him that um, it should be good to and listen to the Nigerian populace and the focus to be to meet the interests of the, 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 um, the vulnerable Nigerian, the um, hopeless Nigerian. I will just tell him to live up with his renewed up agenda to make sure that um, government is taking the stock on. As it starts to create, and I will tell the president that, okay, if you say um, removing subsidy is not, um, you have to remove subsidy because subsidy is a scam or there's some fraud in there. Okay, okay fine, you have removed it, but then what has happened to the trust act? So I would have been happy by now if the so called trust act or the so called scam act, you know, are having that they enforce or they are behind that, but you have passed the body to the ordinary Nigerian. That is already poor. Maybe now the first time I'm in um, Miami Beach in a yard just chilling with, you know, All with right, the uh -huh, So right. that shouldn't be for me. I, I think I'll just tell the president to look more, to look from satisfying the interest of the enemy and for him to cut, to cut his state and to cut um, um, his, um, his um, expenses. So the government should be less anything. And not for people. Right. And thank, I will thank, tell the thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We'll have to hear from Dr. Martin right now because we need to go. Government across the world for that. Thank you, Dr. Mm. All right. Thank you. thank you. So, Dr. Martin, please, in less than 30 seconds, tell us what you would like to see for Nigeria, especially with the fact that we're celebrating 64 years. What's the way forward? It's very easy. We have to strengthen our institutions. And, uh, those who uh, have to be sanctioned appropriately, if not even taking the uh, approach of the Chinese capital punishment, and then we use and free the imports, and the president has to write his name uh, on gold to remember that the revamped economy, not uh, the way we are seeing just living of some of his cabinet officials. Okay. Uh, well, you. we will not take a final word from you. Mm -hmm. We will go. We are going to put you on the hot seat and say we're inviting you back next week because at that time we'll be sure of uh, what the outcome of the protest has been, what Nigerians are reacting to this, and then we'll know what the president is also doing. So at this point, we'll just say thank you to you thank <laughs> for coming you. and hoping you can join us next week for a further discussion. If you cannot, we'll arrange something, something. about that. <laughs> all right. Thanks and so thank much. you to all of our <laughs> other guests. We spoke with Dr. Martin Morgan. We spoke with Nika Gulli. And we also spoke with Dr. Omashola Deji. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming mm. as we celebrate Nigeria at 64. And happy Independence Day to you. Mm. All right. Um, that's it. Thank you. All right, that's it for our show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. Happy Independence Day to you. It's Nigeria at 64, and we're all celebrating. And also, Happy New Month to you. It's mm. the 1st of October, 2024. So we hope that in this final quarter, you have a good, good end of year. And also, Nigeria would be great again. My name is Rume Paulson. I thought you would add end of year party. But there's no, <laughs> it may not be party. We'd also like to say thank you to uh, Sir Kayode Otitoju, who has been in the studio here with us. Uh, it was so much fun having you. And like I said, we look forward to having you again come to talk to us uh, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, but for the rest of the people who have been watching and uh, all our guests, thank you uh, so much. Happy Independence Day to you. We hope that uh, this is the start of something new, something better. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. <laughs>